Hello everybody, it's Ricky Adamas with the Dollhouse San Antonio and it's about 1.30 in the morning. I'm a little bit tired, but today I got a funny text message from one of my friends and the text message wasn't very funny. <laughs> uh, it was one of my friends in a group message with some of my other friends. They sent me a picture of my ex fiance kissing some other guy and saying, I'm going to get married to you in December and I can't wait. You know, all that lovey-dovey stuff. Now, I had seen this happen to other guys. Uh, other times I had seen this happen to other people and I said, oh, well, that's something that happens to somebody else. That's not going to happen to me. And, of course, we all know that, you know, nobody's special. It's something that can happen to anybody. And we all have our different journey that defines us. What we go through is unique. Our perspective that we gain is influenced by our experiences, right? We all go through different relationship problems. We've, you know, some of us date the crazy bitch. Uh, others, they date, you know, a really nice girl, but, you know, it just doesn't work out. But with my MGTOW experience... What happened with me is I got married at about 21, so that was kind of early. It wasn't my idea. Basically, it was my wife's idea, the first one. <laughs> I've been married twice before, so she said, why don't we get married? I want to get married. Let's do that. I said, oh, okay. It was very spontaneous. I went down to the courthouse and got said the I do's or whatever, paid the money, and yay, we were married. Well, the first mistake I made was getting married. <laughs> and the second one was moving out to the country. So we moved out to the country, and she got real lonely. And I was working the night shift as a nurse, and she was staying home. I kind of babied her, and I told her, you don't have to work. Just stay home, honey. I'll take care of you. Well, big mistake, because she was at home all those nights, and she got real bored, and you know, one day I came out of the shower and I noticed that she was talking to somebody and I said, who is that? And I grabbed her phone and I said, what the hell? Why are you texting this guy? Oh, he's just my friend. You know that whole deal. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll give her another chance. We are married after all, right? So you don't have a choice sometimes. Anyway, it happened again. I found out she was texting somebody else, so she was real lonely. Back then I wasn't the most reasonable person, so I'll give her that. You know, I actually don't blame her that much for cheating on me, because back then I was kind of a, you know, D-I-C-K. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, I neglected her. I didn't fulfill her emotional needs. But anyway, so it's, long story short, she ended up cheating on me. Uh, and I was like, how could you do this? You know, like, actually, I didn't even know, like, we got into some petty argument, and I told her, you know what, if you don't, like, calm down, I'm going to send you back to your parents or whatever, you know, and she said, fine, I'm leaving, and she left, and she told me, like, three or four days later, I was like, what the hell, like, why didn't she just tell me, but obviously she didn't want to face my wrath or whatever, so that's why, I think she was a little scared of me. Anyway, that was very hurtful to find out that somebody was screwing somebody else, you know, that my wife was screwing somebody else while I was on the night shift, so. Uh, that was a very painful event. I didn't have any internet or phone or contact with humans whatsoever. I just lived in a house out in the country by myself, and I actually looked forward to going to work because that social isolation was very, very hard on me. How they say in prison, social isolation can really be torture on just the fact that you as a human, you have social needs. Well, at least some of us have social needs. There's very few people who don't that can be true hermits. But it was just torture. It was awful. I was drinking a lot, smoking, uh, jogging a lot. I know it doesn't sound like they fit together, but just whatever I could to get the pain out of my mind, it was just... God awful. I hope that that never happens to anybody. Just imagine being in solitary solitary confinement and you have no contact with humans and you just found out your wife was screwing somebody in your bed while you were working the night shift. It was freaking horrible. And I know that it's not the worst thing that's happened to some of you guys. You know, some of us have been through really horrible experiences where, you know, we got married and had kids and just 
got absolutely destroyed in divorce court and, you know, didn't have enough money to survive, maybe had to move out of the country. We all have uh, our own different experience and what brought us to MGTOW, you know? And personally, it was my brother who shared with me a Sandman video when I was working at 6 or 7 in the morning. I saw the Sandman video, and I'm very glad that I clicked it because, you know, it basically just showed me something that I always wanted to do, but I didn't know that it was something that was acceptable. I was raised just like you to think I'm supposed to grow up and get married and have kids. I was always worried about... When was I going to have time to get married and have kids? But, you know, that freedom that someone else shows us, it can be the greatest gift ever. And it certainly was for me. It's not for everybody. And it's not good for society. But right now, society doesn't care about individual men. So, you know, personally, I like this more. I don't want to be part of the plantation and stuff. I, I think... Maybe if it was traditional, I might do that, but still, this is much more appealing to me. I know it's not good for society, but, you know, right now, like I said, we've got to do what's best for us. So, if you have any experiences like that that you want to share in the comments down below, you know, I feel, feel free to share. But what's funny was, you know, when that guy, he, my friend, he sent me that that uh, picture of that my uh, ex <laughs> kissing that guy you know it kind of reminded me of this uh, ring I bought for her you see I put on Anastasia's hand here but it's a real pretty ring and I kept it you know stupid idiot I was I paid 2300 for it and it's a beautiful ring now I'm not gonna marry Anastasia or anything but those are all diamonds and um I think I just plan to keep it because it's real pretty. You know, if I sold it, I would probably get it for 300 but I don't know. Maybe that's just me holding on to my past. <laughs> so, excuse me, I dropped something on the floor. But, anyway, I know that there's some guys out there that have worked really hard. And no matter what they did, they just couldn't make their woman happy. And I feel like I'm one of those examples. This last girl, she broke up with me, but then she said, hey, let's work it out. And I said, no, let's not. I said, let's not work it out. Because every time I try and do something or build a company or try and make something better of myself and make a bunch of money to take care of you, you distract me and you demand all this time and energy. It's a paradox to think, you know, I could keep this girl and also I can make something of myself one day. One day, I want to be something great. I don't want to be with someone who spends all my time and then one day I'm a 40 or 50, 60 year old man and I've achieved nothing. You know, it's a time sink and that's the biggest turn off for a relationship for me is that you don't have the time to build something that's worth building. And I told one of my friends um, this something at the bowling alley and I told him you know what I have the choice get married and get that 50% now it's more like 80 to 90% chance of getting divorced and lose half of everything uh, or I can be lonely and he said yeah but you know it's worse than being lonely I said what and he said getting divorced losing everything and then being lonely <laughs> I didn't think about that you know it was something that I, it didn't really come to my mind, but I said, you know what, that's a damn good point that I never really thought of. You know, it doesn't guarantee when you get married that you won't end up lonely anyway. And now that I've spent more time by myself and I haven't really been, you know, going out and stuff and just spending more time working on my stuff and, and working on this dollhouse San Antonio... You know, I've gotten used to working alone and just being on the computer, and I really enjoy it a lot. And I encourage you all to follow your passion. If you're with somebody right now, if you don't want to be with them anymore, then by all means, just break it off and do what's best. Because in the end, it's like a, something that will be more fulfilling, even if you have to sacrifice up front. The way some people sacrifice up front for these dolls, you know, it's not worth it at first, but in the end... It does really pay for itself, and I'm not not just trying to be a shill. There's other things that are the same way, you know, like a used car. At first, it's not worth it because it's always breaking down, but 
when you put money into it and you build it into what it used to be, it can actually save you more in the long run. But I don't know. That's just coming from me. I like old cars. I know some of you guys like technology. So for you guys that put in a lot of work and nothing's good enough and you feel like it always ends the wrong way and it doesn't go, <laughs> go the way you plan, like I said, nothing you do is right. You always choose the wrong decision. <laughs> I'm going to play a song for you that I really like. And I didn't used to like it, but now it's really grown on me a lot. It's called I Could Still Make Cheyenne by George Strait. Calls my brain. 